Hello, AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School. And what we're going to look at in this video is the final topic from Unit 8, which is all about applications of integration. And we're going to go into this idea of finding the arc length. In other words, taking a curve of some unusual shape and figuring out how long it is along that curve. And it's a very cool idea that you really wouldn't be able to do without some knowledge of calculus and integration. So let's go ahead and take a look at the beginning stages of this. These are my notes that I give to my students at Avon High School. And to introduce 813, I like to talk about some of the applications of the definite integral that, that occur in calculus AB that also happen to be in unit 8. And the first of which is the area between curves. Maybe you remember this if you're watching this video, how we could find the area between a pair of curves. Let's say this red curve and this blue curve by just subtracting the top minus the bottom curve and then making sure that we integrate those curves along the boundary for which they intersect one another. Now this is a pretty tough example to start off with because you would certainly have to use a calculator in order to compute that. But that shaded region <clears throat> is nonetheless our area. And then if you recall, we talked about uh, finding some volume, three-dimensional shape volume. And we had two methods, the disk method and the washer method. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about these because it's not really related too heavily to what we're going to talk about in arc length. But um, your disk method, if you recall, used the idea of a top function minus a bottom function. So in this case, it was the parabola minus the line all of that would get squared prior to integrating and then of course you multiply by pi if you're using a washer method that's a little different where you had some daylight here between the shaded region and the axis of revolution and therefore you would individually calculate your two radius values and square them individually before subtracting them and of course integrating. So basically you had some things that you could do with knowledge of the definite integral. Things that have to do with finding a measurement area or volume. Well now we're going to find yet another measurement and this measurement is called arc length. And the cool thing about arc length is that it's very easily relatable to something that you're probably somewhat familiar with, let's hope, and that is our good friend the distance formula. The distance between two points in the xy coordinate plane. So hopefully that formula looks a little familiar to you. So how does this work, you might ask? Well, <clears throat> first of all, in order to perform this arc length, we have to have what's called a rectifiable curve. And that's just simply a curve that has a finite arc length. So this formula does not work, or this procedure does not work, if your curve does something like this. <laughs> because we're going to get an infinite answer if this curve continues forever. So we have closed interval here, as you can see in this picture. Now, the function's derivative must also be continuous over that interval. And that, that's when we say we have a nice smooth curve. Now, how do we do this? Well, if we really wanted to find how far it was along this blue curve or arc, we outsmart the problem to a degree, and we f basically think about other points along the curve. And we connect those points with what would be a straight line segment. And those straight line segments can then be computed, or at least their lengths can be computed by using this distance formula. Now, the notation's a little scary looking. So for example, let's say that my beginning point A is also uh, known as x sub 0, and my end point B is known as x sub n. Any subsequent x just counts with the subscript 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. on up to n. And between any two of these, we have a change in x, or a delta x, we'll call this. And you can see that's depicted again in this particular segment. All right. So the same thing is true between our y values. Between any pair of y values, 
we have a distance of delta y. Okay, so where does this all go? Well, if I move you to the next page, what we're going to do is just add up a bunch of areas. I'm sorry, a bunch of lengths. I got back into our uh, uh, area under a curve mode. We're talking about the length of an arc here. So here is our distance formula using subscripts that are consecutive. Let's say an i followed by the i value that comes just before. So this could be x sub 1 minus x sub 0. It could be x sub 2 minus x sub 1, whatever you want. So I have a length of any arbitrary line segment. What do you say we add up a bunch of those? And then that's going to count all of our little lengths. OK, I see where this is going. Let's take a look and see what happens from one step to the next. From here to here, all that we did is we used delta notation to denote the subtraction or the change in. Not a big deal, really. OK, from this step to this step, what happens? Well, all I'm doing here is I'm deciding to multiply by a delta xi squared, but I quickly compensate by dividing by a delta xi squared. So I'm essentially multiplying by 1. I know it's a weird step, but sometimes these proofs have these weird steps in order to make them work. So I haven't changed the value of this when I multiplied by 1. Well, let's see why I did that. So when we go to this next step, I just do a little algebraic simplification. The delta xi squared over delta xi squared will reduce to be a 1. So I'm, I'm splitting apart this fraction, if you can't tell. The delta y squared over delta x squared stays as it is. I just write it as one fraction quantity squared. And then this guy becomes him. Now, if you look very carefully, that's allowed to happen because notice that this term is underneath the radical in the third step, but now the term in the fourth step is free of the radical. The radical ends right there. So in other words, the square root of delta x squared is delta x. All right, what happens next? Well, remember, we want to find the length of a curve, an arc. We don't want to find lengths of straight lines that are added together. But if you were to take each of these straight line segments, and if you put an infinite number of them into the problem, they get infinitely smaller, smaller and smaller, and you get to a point that you can't even tell that they're straight lines anymore. They might be very tiny parts of curves. And that's the way that we outsmart the problem into being able to count up an infinite number of things. And so we just really let this n be infinity. Of course, you can't put an infinity on top of a summation, so we outsmart it by using a limit notation. And then we've talked about this before, but those two symbols together pretty much transform into the integration symbol, as we talked about quite a bit in calculus AB. Delta y over delta x is essentially the slope, also known as a derivative, the derivative of your function f that you're trying to find the arc length for. And then, of course, you square it. And then the delta x out in the back just rewrites as our dx notation for our differential that we need for our integral. And so that's really all it is. It's a very easy formula to memorize. That's typically not a problem. And here in the box, we have our official definition of arc length. If a function y equal f of x is a smooth curve on the interval a to b, the arc length of f is denoted by this. I don't want you to be confused by the letter s. Oftentimes in my class, I'll use l. For, for arc length. That seems like it makes a little bit more sense sometimes than S, but some textbooks use S. Notice there are two versions of this formula. You could set this up with respect to Y. If all that you're given is information about Y, a function in terms of Y, your boundaries that they give you are Y's, you can certainly do this the same way in terms of Y. It's not very common, but it's a, it is a thing. So 
What I want to do is, is run through a, a, just a real quick generic example in this video and then we'll close out and then if you'd like you can watch some of the subsequent videos um, uh, about the uh, 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 more specific types of functions that you can find the arc length for. And I do want to pay, make a special note. A lot of these integrals are very nasty and they really can't be solved without the use of a calculator. That will be uh, emphasized quite a bit in videos two and three. But for video one, I'm going to do something that you might think is a little peculiar, but kind of go along with me here. Find the arc length from x1, y1 to x2, y2 on the graph of f of x equal mx plus b, as shown in the figure. So I want to figure out, well, what is the distance from here to here? And I know you're probably thinking, what? <laughs> That's not an arc. Just stay with me. So if we use our formula, right, and our, and our formula says that the arc length is the integration from a to b of the square root of 1 plus our function's derivative squared all with respect to x. So this is what we're trying to set up in this problem. So the first thing that I have students do is let's figure out what is the derivative of our function. Now in this case the derivative of mx plus b is m. Now I got a little problem with that because m is just going to introduce yet another variable. So for this particular version of m I would like to use my full-fledged slope formula, which I know is just the difference of the y's over the difference of the x's, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so I need to square this, and that's going to be my f prime of x squared. Well, I'm not going to work really hard on squaring this, you guys. I'm just going to write it like this for just the time being. And then when I need to simplify it or work with it, I'll do that when the time comes. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and set up our formula. L equals, the arc length equals, the integration from, well, I start my arc length from an x value that's called x sub 1, because it would correspond to that coordinate, and I'm going to end it at x sub 2. So those would be my boundaries. And I'm going to integrate the square root of 1 plus this expression y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 quantity squared. And of course we're doing so with respect to x. I know, kind of ugly looking, but let's keep going with this. Let's see what we can do. I got a feeling that we're going to need to get a common denominator. This is a little bit uh, messy look in here. So I'm going to suggest that we just give that a shot and, and see where it takes us. So the integral drops down x1, x2, upper and lower bounds, square root. And the denominator I see that's in common would be x2 minus x1 quantity squared. So if we make that the entire denominator, x2 minus x1 quantity squared, we're going to need to multiply this 1 by an x2 minus x1 quantity squared as well. And then over here, plus our y2 minus y1 quantity squared just drops down. And now we can put our square root over this entire expression with respect to x. All right, so, so far, hopefully that makes sense. All right, well, believe it or not, we are actually ready to integrate this thing. And I know that that just sounds absolutely crazy. You're like, what? I, I, I don't know how to integrate this. Well, you actually do. Because if you notice very closely, this particular expression is just chock full of constants. That's what x2, x1, y2, and y1 are. They would be essentially constant values. And, and even though we're subtracting or adding and dividing and, and then square rooting, those are just operations performed on constants. So if we integrate this ugly constant expression with respect to x, what we will get is this ugly fractional expression, which, yep, I got to write again, 
square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared all over x2 minus x1 squared all multiplied by x and then evaluated from an upper bound of x2 to a lower bound of x1. Okay, I promise we're getting there. What's going to happen next? Well, we are going to go ahead and plug in x2 for our x and plug in x1 for our x and subtract. Now, you might see what's about to happen, but just in case it's not clear, I'm going to write this one last time, and I know we're probably getting tired of seeing it, but I still have that very icky radical expression dancing around here. And as I said before, I'm going to take that expression and multiply it by x2. And then I'm going to subtract. And then rather than writing that expression again, I refuse to do that. Notice how I factored it out so I can then plug in our x1. And I apologize. I put the 2 as a superscript and it should be a subscript. So there. That's what we would have. Hopefully that makes sense. Now... Do you see what's about to happen? This term and essentially this term will cancel. And I know at first it's like, wait, wait a minute, this has got a square with it. But remember, he's still underneath the square root. So technically, this is an x2 minus x1 to the first power in the denominator. So those do indeed cancel. And your final answer would be, oh, I guess I do have to write this just one more time because it is my answer. But I don't need the denominator, at least at this point. And so this is it. And it might have already been apparent to many of you watching. Isn't this what you expected your answer to be in the first place? It's like, whoa, I I'm just asking you to find the length of this line segment. Why couldn't we just jump right to this? Well, of course we could, right? And the whole point of this problem isn't to find this arc length that you were incapable of finding. It was just to show you that this procedure is indeed intact and it does work in all cases. Now, what's going to be really cool, and I want you to make sure you tune in for some of these other videos, you're going to see some future videos, for examples two and three, that aren't so obvious. We're going to look at a curve right here in example two that you can actually use calculus to find out how long that is. And then we'll take a look at a slightly different one here in example three, and we can figure out those. And that's when this particular procedure uh, becomes quite useful. I hope this helps, and we'll see you at these next couple of videos.